What's up guys? Got another review on the SB120. This time it's a head-to-head -head version uh, against the Ibis Ripley. For those of you who follow the channel, you know the Ibis Ripley has been, in my opinion, one of the best short travel trail bikes you could buy in the last couple of years. Geometry is really good on it. Um, climbs well, it descends well. I mean, it just kind of does everything really well. And so, uh, it's November of 2022 and this SB120 came out. If you haven't seen that review, you can click right up here. I've been riding this bike for the last week and a half. I've had a chance to ride uh, and compare it against a couple other different bikes. The Ripley comes to mind. I mean, if you look at, if you go to Yeti's website or if you click the link down below, you can go look at the geometry numbers of this Yeti SB120. The numbers are very similar to the Ripley on paper, but riding it this week, the last couple of days, these bikes are really not that similar. Yeah, it'd be, I think the real test is that back to back with the Trail 429. Yeah. In fact, here, hop on this. I don't know, these, these three bikes are like so close to each other though. Hop on this Ripley and you'll see what I mean. Like, it, it feels like a toy. I just need to lose weight and then I don't have to like, <laughs> I know. I, That's a good excuse to lose weight, right? Dude, for three seasons, I put 176 PSI in that and I put 182 PSI in it this time just to give it a little bit extra. Okay, and it's still soft feels good it feels i didn't get to the travel let's see where you get to that's just like on. perfect though in my opinion like yeah that's, that's where you want to be that's a full stroke Shh. um it'll be off the back too mine was off the back on that one okay that same thing with that one it'll be off the back when you bottom it okay but you'll just see it feels like a toy like if it just feels so just it's, uh, it's just easy to ride i, I love that bike okay, let's that's why it. i always come back to it <laughs> i always come back to that bike the steering feels quicker on that bike too. I'll be interested to see what you think. <laughs> this one like definitely more easy going it's way more easy it's so much more playful it's crazy it's just, huh it's not i love it it's fun the yeti sb120 feels like more like a trail bike in fact when i first rode i thought man yeah, it, it feels good it feels you know like a short travel trail bike but it wasn't until i rode these back to back with tyler switching back and forth throughout our rides um that i realized wow this this 120 uh, from Yeti really is like stepping up and kind of 
bumping into the market of the old Yeti SB130, which no longer exists. It's now an SB140. Hopefully I'll be able to review that bike soon. Um, that Yeti just came out with. Uh, again, it's November of 2022 and, and they just barely came out. And so I am excited to tell you about how this bike compares to the Ripley. Um, climbing, this bike has so much support just right when you get on it. Um, support at the sag level. So the top portion of the stroke has a ton of support, more than the Ripley, um, more than the Rocky Mountain Element or uh, Santa Cruz Tallboy or any of those other bikes. Um, this bike, the Ripley, feels slightly softer and more easygoing climbing. This one feels, geez, like almost like a hardtail, like it just wants to, to really go. And I mentioned in the uh, original SB120 video review that you could um, go and watch also that this bike um, climbing, you know, I kind of break climbing up into two categories, like the how, how efficient does it feel pedaling the bike, but also what's the bike's ability to get through a low traction type situation or a very technical um, obstacle or section of trail where a bike will lose traction easily. Um, that, that's the two parts of climbing, right? And in terms of pedal efficiency, man, this might be like the most efficient. It feels almost like a hard tail. Like you just feel like every pedal stroke is pushing the bike forward up the trail. You're not losing a lot of power in the suspension at all because of how firm the top of that stroke is from sag up. It's in the lower traction uh, scenarios or sections of trail that I think bikes like the Pivot Trail 429 really excel, or even bikes like the Revel Rascal um, which is a little bit longer travel bike, but just it, it really kind of like, it sounds weird, but it kind of bears down and finds traction. Like it just, it's very, it's an active suspension that finds traction, like the Pivot Trail 429, for example. Um, so I think climbing between these two bikes, they're both very, very good. This one just out on a fire road might feel more efficient than that one. That one I think gets through trickier bits of trail maybe a little cleaner than this one does. It's a little softer. It just feels a little softer onto you. Heading downhill, this bike, even though the geometry, you know, they both have a 66 and a half degree head tube angle on both of them. This one feels slightly more, a bit more stable, kind of like the Pivot Trail 429. In fact, I was excited to do this review, but uh, this comparison, but after riding these bikes for a couple days, I thought, man, the real comparison probably would have been the SB120 versus the Pivot Trail 429. Those bikes are more similar. Um, that bike, the Ripley, is more lively when you start when you start going downhill. It's more lively. You can kind of zip around more. It feels a little twitchier, you know, not quite as stable as the uh, Yeti SB120. I, I think maybe it has longer chain stays. Um, and that's the other thing to think about is the SB120, I'm on a size uh, medium in both bikes and I'm five foot eight, but the Yeti feels like the more modern bike, um, the more current bike, which makes sense. It just came out and that bike's been out for basically three years. But this has ch um, size specific chainstay lengths. So as you go up in size to large or extra large, the uh, length of the chainstays increases, right? Um, in any case, the chainstays on this bike are longer than, than the Ripley. And I think that adds to maybe that more stable and planted feeling. Um, that bike just feels softer though, everywhere. And trust me, I have the suspension set up. 11 millimeters of sag on that bike. The, the Yeti has, I think, 13 and a half millimeters of sag, and they both feel like they're in the right spot in terms of setting up the suspension. Um, this bike just feels more neutral, you know? It's not as lively. It doesn't uh, make you want to just absolutely dive into every corner hard, where the Ripley, I mean, I'm beating a dead horse at this point. The Ripley just wants you just to have so much fun. <laughs> I love that bike. Um, th this bike is still really very good, but it just feels um, more neutral, you know? Um, it feels supportive throughout the travel, more supportive than that bike does, until you get toward the bottom. Um, toward the bottom, that's, that bike still uh, feels more linear. Like It feels like the same level of support throughout the whole stroke on the Ripley. Whereas this one, it feels very firm and supportive uh, 
think of like when you're mashing through the pedals or like really um, getting into a turn and really geeing out in the turn. Um, you can start to feel yourself get through the travel a little bit here towards the end of the stroke or maybe beyond halfway for sure through the stroke. Um, in terms of high speed, um, this bike, for some reason, even though the geometry is so similar, this bike can feel more stable, more, uh, more confidence inspiring. You might feel safer on this bike at a higher speed than you would the Ripley. Um, and so some of you might say, well, then why don't you like the SB120 better than the Ripley? Well, because I don't necessarily like that. You know, most of the trails I see most people riding, most of the trails you see in my videos are blue trails and they're flow trails. And you know, at, at under 18 miles per hour descending, that bike's more rewarding. It's fun, it's zippy, it's more responsive. It feels kind of twitchy in comparison to this one. You could say twitchy or you could say playful, but it does, it, it's more playful. Um, and there's always the same level of support, like I said, through the shock as you're pumping and pushing through it and stuff. It's very consistent. Um, I think if maybe my trails were a little bit um, higher speed, and they're not slow speed by any means, but if they were higher speed, you know, this one might feel like maybe a little better on some trails, right? Um, it would be really hard for me to, to I, I just couldn't. I couldn't choose the SB120 over the Ripley, but I think some people could. If you're a bigger guy, it does feel stiffer and more stable than the Ripley. And so that might be a reason to look at that. I only weigh 145 pounds and I'm five foot eight. So that's maybe something to consider. It's also the more modern bike, like just looking at like the way the cables are routed through here and down through the bottom here. Um, it just feels like a more modern bike. I like that they do the um, size specific chain stays as well. And it just, like I said, when you hit the pedals on the SB120, everything is going forward on this bike. It's, it's really, it's really cool. I, I bet a lot of people will run this bike with a longer 140 millimeter fork. Um, the other thing to consider is you can get the Ripley in an XT build from Shimano group set or um, an X01 build from SRAM. And it's $6,999. This bike for an X01 build from SRAM is $8,200, I want to say. You're like $1,200 more. I don't know, man. I would take that one and keep the $1,200 is what I would do. Um, there's going to be people out there who just love Yeti, though, and I totally get it. Like, it's a very modern bike. It's just the, the Switch Infinity suspension system is really very good. And I can understand why a lot of people really love it. I just, I'm an Ibis fanboy. I mean, there, there's obviously some bias in this video, and, and there's no sense of me not mentioning it. I just think, I think that that bike runs so well. And I'm not sponsored by Yeti or Ibis or anything like that. My, my, nobody's sponsored me. <laughs> and so I just try to ride as many of these bikes as I can and give you guys the most honest feedback. Um, I, I should just say that the Pivot Trail 429 is the most well-rounded. Um, it's the bike I probably recommend the most in the last year to people looking at bikes in this category. And this SB120 is probably more similar to that bike than the Ripley. Um, for whatever it's worth, you know, you can think about that. Um, I think I've already mentioned like three times in this video that it's November of 2022 and it's freezing cold outside. So I won't have a chance to ride this bike and compare it to the Pivot 1249, but look forward to that video in the spring. Also, uh, I got these bikes from Salt Cycles here in Sandy, Utah. They have been helping uh, supply parts and bikes and just all sorts of support to tons of viewers of this channel. Um, they're the only support I have is Salt Cycles that helps me get bikes and do this YouTube channel. So if you're looking for a Yeti SB120, they have all four colors in stock now. They obviously have Ripley's in stock as well. They're one of the largest um, Ibis dealers in the country and they can fully customize your bike however you would want it. Um, they can upgrade parts and not charge you all, all the money for it. Um, they can just offset the price of the parts that you already bought that come with the bike. Um, if you want an XT build or an XTR build, on your Yeti. They can totally do that really seamlessly, really easy. So call Courtney 
or Jason or Chris and talk to them about building a bike. Um, I always build full XTR bikes. So both these bikes are full XTR group set. I ran four piston brakes. Um, I should have mentioned that in the original uh, Yeti SB120 video. I don't think I mentioned that. But I run four piston brakes on both of these bikes because for the years that I was riding the Ripley, I ran two piston brakes. Mistake, huge mistake. I'm lightweight at only 145 pounds. Go four piston brakes. It just makes all the sense in the world. Um, I think they're both really good bikes. The uh, Just to sum it all up, uh, the Ripley is more rewarding on slower speed trails. Um, I think that this bike is kind of picking up where the SB130 left off, although this has a much more neutral like riding position. You don't have to get as forward and as aggressive on this bike as you did the SB130. That said, it is you have to ride this bike more aggressive than the Ripley. The Ripley is the more easygoing, user-friendly bike. It's probably the best way to put that. Anyway, call Chris at Salt Cycles. He can get you set up. Um, also, click the links down below if there's anything that you're shopping for right now. Um, I have all my affiliate links down there. Those uh, are actual affiliate links that pay me a commission if you end up using them. That's a great way to support the channel. I get lots of uh, uh, Instagram direct messages, obviously messages in the comment section down below in this uh, YouTube, and then emails weekly from viewers of the channel. I always am happy to respond and comment. They oftentimes ask me, how can we support the channel? The best way to support the channel is to buy a bike from Salt Cycles or use these links in the description down below. That's how I get paid. That's how I keep this channel going. So I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, it's a great time to be a mountain biker. There's so many amazing, good options. Um, bikes are getting a little expensive and that's the other reason why I kind of think for 1200 bucks less, the Ripley maybe. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, stay tuned for more uh, coming out in the next couple months. Thanks guys. That's fine. So? Where'd it be on that bike? Would you? <laughs> I would. Just more fun. More fun, yeah. The, it, weight, the weight penalty you take on it, it's like. So it weighs more. It's oh. not quite as nimble or easy going. So. This could be more of like a. <laughs> trail race bike right it feels more like a trail bike than it i mean you gotta realize for the last year i've been on that ibis Axi, which is an actual cross country actual bike. bike yeah so that feels way more twitchy than either one of these bikes yeah and it feels just more twitchy and more delicate like underneath me you know yeah that doesn't that feels pretty to me it feels stable more stable than the ripley i guess i like the instability <laughs> just that gives you the option to like flick it around more though too right it's like just makes it more totally more easy going as far as maneuvering it and getting out of the way of things, which I like in a bike. Yeah. That's me though. Yeah, you wanna hop back on here for baby rush? Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. Let's see if I get all the way through the suspension. <sighs> I bet you will. I don't think you'll feel it bottom though. I still feel like that, like in the middle, still have like that same feeling every time I jump, it's just like it just kinda goes through that middle quick. Yep. There you go, you got the bottom on that one. That's fun. That fun. Ripley's more fun. It is way more fun. <laughs>